Um, this is a this is, a, this is gonna be probably a short section. Um, here, you know, when we started running all those EC2 instances, started thinking about how we were going to um, manage, like maybe like regular updates, like you know, patching the operating system on an ongoing basis. And I started thinking about, um, I thought I just took a sidebar and looked at Ansible, which is a, you know one of these automation tools for basically remote managing systems. Um, some other systems out there are things like um, Chef, Puppet, those are the ones I've heard of. So we'll, we'll take a peek at Ansible and see how it works for this purpose. Um, so that's what this is. Um, so the, before we go into that particular, I also happen to notice that Packer, um, Packer has a, can, we can use Ansible as the provisioner to actually provision our box using Ansible instead of the way we did it previously. So if you recall previously, the way we did it was when we wanted to build our image, we started with a Ubuntu image here, right? And then we ran provisioners and we mainly ran shell commands like sudo apt update, upgrade, install Apache, enable Apache. And then we copied the file to a temp folder and then we eventually copied the file into place. So this is very, you know, much focused on the commands itself. Now, instead, what we can do is we can use Ansible to essentially do the same thing. So here, I'll just show you the Ansible, uh, the Ansible version. And of course, this is linked in, into the story. Um, the beginning part's essentially the same, except for here I switched to using Red Hat instead of Ubuntu. I was having all sorts of trouble, like re uh, reliably installing a, a Apache for whatever reason on Ubuntu 18, which was the latest version of Ubuntu. So I just switched to Red Hat and just saved myself some grief eventually. Um, so that's one difference here. But you'll notice instead of having the provisioner ha it's running a bunch of commands, it's just executing the Ansible provisioner and it refers to a playbook file. And again, this is not necessarily a tutorial on uh, Ansible, but you can kind of sense the general flow. So this is the config file for Ansible. And basically the way this reads is uh, this becomes yes means basically run sudo before everything. Um, we're gonna basically run the yum, um, I forget the term is, but package here. Um, and we're going to run, basically it's going to do a present means essentially install HTTPD, right? And then we're going to enable, um, actually I should call this, this should be, this is just a comment, it should be enable HTTPD. Um, so it's really running HTTPD and enables it, right? Then I copy the index file um, and then I'm copying it from, again the names are just basic descriptives, right? So then we just basically copy index HTML to var. So it's, it's a little bit more easy to read than the, all those commands, right? This kind of reads more like a playbook. In fact, this is called a playbook. Okay, so I'm making a comment to myself, fix playbook. Just so we look at, I just, I wanna fix that typo. Okay, so basically now we're basically, when we do our packer, we're basically running through this Ansible playbook rather than a series of explicit commands. Just a minor upgrade. Uh, that was, again, more of a sidebar. So instead, what we really want to focus here on, oh, before I forget. So once I, you know, just so you know, I built a new image um, in AMI, and then what I did with it was I went, of course, like I did before, I would go into the to do's RS app, and I just had to go into the, um, I believe it was the Terraform variables, and um, change up the legacy image ID here, right? Um, where's my mouse? Let me pause the video for a second until I get my mouse back. Oh, you crashed my machine. Okay, I think it, my machine woke up, so I don't wanna screw up the video, so. Um, long story short, you just changed that. I changed it to AMI, reran this, and it updated. Um, you know, basically, um, re basically built my um, 
my image for uh, right now I only have one of them but I basically re relaunched that image now one thing I did change in here if you look in the main TF I did fix a couple things in here um, that were I figured out during this exercise right one was I believe in the template here I had some ignoring of keys and I believe of the in image ID and it turns out the reason why I, those were in there were tied to a mistake I made where I forgot to add my environment variables for the key name and the image ID in my, um, my, my code build environment. So what was happening, I was getting conflicts between when the code build would run, it would actually not work. And then when I ran it locally, it would work, but it kept on detecting changes. But that's because I had a mistake in my code build environment. So I got rid of those that uh, ignore, I was ignoring certain keywords here. That was one change. Another thing I figured out was just because this template changed, it wasn't forcing my auto scaling group to, to change. So then I was kind of stuck. So a little bit of Googling, the strategy here was instead of naming the, um, the auto scaling group directly, you can name it with a prefix, which includes something that changes. So here it's legacy, and then it uses the latest version of the template. So if the template ever changes, it changes the name, which causes the whole scaling group to re get rebuilt. So this was kind of a, kind of a somewhat a hacky way to force the auto scaling group to reprovision the instances whenever the template changed. Okay, so those are the changes here. Um, anyway, that's the changes there. Um, don't send. Okay, that was, that's what was freaking out my machine earlier. Um, now let's get back to what we really wanted to do was look at how do we remote control our our boxes, right? So um, let me first, uh, let me go to the Medium article real quick. Let's see if I can get to it quick enough. Um, stories. In particular, there was one command I wanted to show you, um, and I didn't want to. I want to. It's in the. It's linked in the story. Uh, okay, so the very end of this thing, you will notice there is one command right here. So um, let me zoom into this thing too. Okay. So one of the things I figured out in, in working with this is that um, we want to directly control the, the, the machines that are in our private subnets, but they're, you know, right now they're all remoted, behind, we're only accessible through the bastion. So previously we would manually connect to the bastion and then we'd connect manually from there to the uh, private instances, right? Or instances in the private subnets turns out that you could actually do a different technique where you can actually run secure shell to and, and this is this is this is like ubuntu at 10.10.133 right um this right here is the remote machine right now actually i should change this too by the time you look at this will change because we're not using ubuntu anymore we're using red hat so it's i believe it's ec2 user here right and then this minus o basically is providing an option and this next part is basically saying, rather than directly trying to connect to the machine, we're going to basically funnel all the traffic through this other command, which is secure shell basically to, in this case, this is the, we still have Ubuntu as our um, Bastion host. So we funnel basically all the traffic that's destined to 10.0.10.133. We're proxying, sh whatever they want to call it. They, we basically, funneling the commands through this bastion host. So we can directly talk to this private instance by funneling that traffic. So that's basically what that's doing. Now this is important because that's something we're gonna use when we use Ansible, because Ansible uses secure shell to connect and do things. And we need a way to get through the, the bastion host. So I wanted to show you that this command is something that's specific to secure shell, not Ansible so much per se. It's just a secure shell feature. So, and, and what we'll see is we're gonna use that immediately. So one of the first things you do, you know, you install Ansible. One of the first things you need to do is uh, configure your host file. 
So um, VI, et cetera, Ansible hosts. Um, let me see if I can, will this zoom bigger? I don't know. Zoom in. Oh yeah, here it is. Okay, so what you need to do basically is, is essentially this is a host file based of IP addresses, right? So our bastion's at 54.87, legacy is at 10.0.12.148, right? Now, th this extra terminology is the way you group it, so I just grouping the bastion under this bastion group, and legacy is the group for, right now there's only one, but any of the legacies, if we, before we had three, so there would have been three entries here. So this is the group of all the legacy servers, right? And then you can actually pass additional variables to, this, you know, to these hosts. So that's what we're doing here in these two sections. So this is defining the variables, kind of like configuration options for bastion hosts. And these are configuration options for legacy hosts. So the first, for the bastion, which is Ubuntu, it turns out that uh, many of the, basically the Ansible doesn't like using Python 2, which is the default Python for every reason with Ubuntu. It gives you all these deprecation warnings. And the suggestion is, is we can actually tell Ansible for the bastion host to use user bin Python 3 instead of Python 2, which is default for all of its operations. Because basically Ansible uses Python on the remote machine as part of its operations. Now, it turns out that for Red Hat, that's not necessary. Uh, Red Hat actually prefers Python 2 and it doesn't give you any warnings about using Python 2. So that's why it doesn't have the entry. But our legacy boxes are all on private subnets. So you can see this extra, and this is where we looked at that last shell, secure shell command. This is a, this basically there's extra arguments for passing to secure shell. And if you look at this, this is basically the same thing we did earlier, which is minus O proxy command, and then we pass on the secure shell. So this is basically doing the same thing I just described earlier, which is we're telling it whenever we need to connect to that legacy box, we're going to funnel the traffic through the bastion host. Okay, so that's what that's, that's what that file's about. And then the only other files that are important here is, um, and we'll see it in action here. So, um, cd hello ansible, I believe it is. Um, there's two files, one is called ping. So okay, let's look at both of these. Cat ping. Okay, so basically this is a this is again Ansible format of a, what's called a playbook, and the playbook has one set of tasks, right? And um, right now it only has one task called ping, and it's going to ping all the basically hosts, and or ping the hosts, and the command is ping, and it's going to target the legacy boxes. So if I run this, let's see if it works. Um, Ansible, Ansible. Playbook, ping. Oh, so it probably won't work. Just to. And it's basically trying to connect. Okay, it did work. So in this case, it actually funneled the traffic through the bastion host, was able to basically connect to it and say it's all good. Okay, and another command is um, upgrade, right? And this is what we're really trying to go after in the first place. This basically connects up to the, uh, any, any of the group of legacy hosts, which is only one right now. Just says become root users, this is like basically running sudo. Um, the remote user is EC2 user. And I'm going to um, run yum, basically this is basically yum upgrade on all packages and move them to the latest. So if I do this, it may take a while. Let me see if I can try to do it here. Um, if I do Ansible playbook upgrade. So that's gonna try to connect to right now the one box and then try to do a yum upgrade. And this may take a while. Actually, yeah, I had just done it earlier. It took about five minutes. And now it's already been upgraded, so it doesn't take any time at all. Basically says it's all done. Right? So you know, so now I anytime I want to 
um, upgrade all of the um, basically all the packages on my legacy boxes if there's more than one I just run upgrade.yaml and they all just upgrade so that's basically the general idea is that I'm able to automate that process you know even though it's super simple um, looking ahead uh, and I don't have a great answer right now if you look at the this file Right now, I've got hard coded in the Bastion, which you know not, that's not too bad because that's a static IP that's never going to change. But this this legacy IP, this private IP address, if I relaunch, for example, my auto scaling group or whatever, these IP addresses always change. They're never they're never fixed. So this is a kind of a broken process in the sense right now that um, this is only, these IP addresses under legacy are only as good as that auto scaling group um, stability. If it, if it has to provision another one, I'm not gonna get it here, right? So we're going to, in the next um, section of this series, we're gonna think about that and come up with a solution. And it's probably not gonna be Ansible because uh, AWS has some tools that do similar functionality as this, but using AWS's internal tools. So we'll look, take a peek at that. Okay, that's it. Thank you.